Motion. And I move the motion in my name and in the names of Leanne Wood and Vicky Howells. And uh, I apologise to who I start for my voice. Unfortunately, we might have guessed I've not been so well lately, but we'll move on. Now, Wales is a nation with a great history. And we have many buildings from medieval times that reflect that history, whether it be the many castles that remain visible or the many religious sites across our country. But we move on a few hundred years, and we also have a vast and wondrous industrial heritage, especially from a time when Wales was a driver of major exports such as coal, copper, iron, steel. And it's only the buildings that produce those exports, the mines, the ironworks, etc., that remind us of that industrial past, but also the infrastructure that was put in place to, to allow those products to be transported. Now, some of that infrastructure is still visible. For example, in my own constituency, we can see the huge arches of the railway viaduct and of those of the aqueduct, both in Pont Reven, or the seven arches of the bridge in Cummer. I'm sure many members this afternoon, when they speak, will highlight such, such structures and buildings within their own constituencies. And we all know some of them, whether the Pont Cassette Aqueduct, Big Pit, the Ironworks in Merthyr. But as well as the visible aspects of our industrial heritage, many of which have been restored and re-established for tourism or walking and cycling, there are many aspects of our industrial heritage that are invisible. Mines that have been closed, disused railways lines where the rails have been removed, canals which have become overgrown, and a vast network of tunnels as well as other infrastructure which once carried the riches of Wales to our ports for distribution across the world. The decline of our industrial past took its toll on these across Wales, and in particular the South Wales Valleys. Add to that the actions taken following the Beechin reports in the 1960s, which saw a reduction of the route network and restructuring of the railways across the UK. And that was not popular, remember, because many protests actually resulted in saving some of those stations and lines, but the majority were closed, as planned, and Beechin's name remained associated with the mass closure of railways and the loss of many local services in that period that followed. Now, a few of these routes have since reopened. Some short sections have been preserved as heritage railways. The Gwilly Railway, the Brecon Mountain Railway, to name a few in here in Wales, Corwin Railway, Llangollen. Uh, others have been incorporated into cycling and walking networks. And the remainder have either been returned to their own natural farmland or they remain derelict. Now, one of those lines affected by the beaching cuts was the Swansea Bay to the Ronda line. When operational, this route ran, ran through my constituency from Britain Ferry, which many people didn't realise was a huge port at one point, going through Patolba and Lola Abraven up the Avon Valley, where it branched off to many other routes. Now, these routes often require numerous tunnels, allowing them to travel up the valley and between valleys. The majority are now disused and closed off, including the Gekli Tunnel, the Gavachi Tunnel, the Kamadakaira Tunnel, and one of the longest tunnels in the UK, the Ronda Tunnel, running between Blengwimby and Blencombe. And on the screens you will see a golden picture of some of the aspects of that particular tunnel. Now, that tunnel, railway line allowed us to join the railway lines in the Ronda Valley, and therefore it's industrial infrastructure across Wales that we need to see as an opportunity to be ambitious in the future. We should not lose sight of what these infrastructures actually offer us. Now, my remaining contributions this afternoon will focus upon these hidden gems, and in particular the Ronda Tunnel, which can offer opportunities for local communities to benefit from their regeneration. And the Ronda Tunnel, 3,443 yards long, or just under two miles, 1,000 feet below the ground at the steepest, with a 58 ventilation shaft, 58 foot ventilation shaft, and uh, it was a ma massive piece of work. And it was, it actually, I was dropped down into the tunnel through that ventilation shaft. And you can see the actual fantastic Victorian engineering that built that. Well, that was built between 18, 1885 and 1890. Officially opened in 1890. And a critical component of that line, connecting mines of the Ronda to the ports in Swansea Bay. And it also became a route for passenger, passengers as well later on in life. So we had opportunities as time went on, not only to have an industrial line, but also a passenger line to allow that connection between the two communities. Now, the railway line was actually dual line, if you know, if you know much of railways, but the tunnel itself was a single line and dual at either port does. Now, unfortunately, in 1968, the decision was taken to close the tunnel temporarily, as there was work needed to repair it. 
But in December 1970, the Department of Transport made a decision to close that tunnel permanently, citing the costs of repair as prohibitive. Strange how it actually coincided with the closure of both the Blind Wimby and Blind Gonda stations as part of the beaching cuts. We can only assume that they just happen to be coincidental. So that happened, and in 1980, as a consequence, both portals were closed and blocked off to prevent unauthorised intrusions, because we know they have to be protected because many children tend to walk into places like the tunnels as an excited experience, and we need to ensure and protect them and safeguard them. Now, we're almost 130 years on from when that tunnel was opened. It is the longest disused tunnel in Wales. And the Royal Tunnel Society, I know some of the members are in the gallery this afternoon, has established themselves and have a vision, a vision, Deputy Minister, which I share with them, a vision that will see the Gondor Tunnel preserved for our children's future, which will re reconnect the Avon Valley and the Gondor Vau for pedestrians and cyclists, and not just for people in the two valleys, but for people from elsewhere and further afield. Can I just join him in commending the work of all those people who put the time and effort into uh, the Ronda Tunnel and getting that uh, reopened. Uh, we know the progress that's been made, but how much yeah. more is still to be done. But I'd also welcome, on the back of that, and I'm sure they would, the Ronda Tunnel people themselves, in the future, the reopening of the, what is known in engineering circles as the Maiseg Tunnel, the, the Kama to uh, Kaira Tunnel. And the fascinating thing with that tunnel uh, is that it was done in two different ways. On the Kaira end was totally different from the Kamara end. The Kamara end was dynamite, which cost the lives of 11 men. But the Kaira end was actually done by the sort of technology that was used then in the channel tunnel elsewhere of a machine that bored the hole. So there are good historical reasons to actually open these tunnels as well, as well as what he could do for cycling and recreation. Can I thank my colleague, the member for Ogmore, highlighting the various tunnels that exist and the Kaira to come one is one of the ones clearly I mentioned earlier. It is one of the uh, tunnels in that valley you can still look at very carefully. And you highlight a point that, in fact, it's not just about what we can do when we regenerate those tunnels, but it's also reminding ourselves of the history of those tunnels and the techniques and technology that was used in developing them. Now, the ability to offer an experience that will allow people to use existing cycling and walking infrastructure, and the member actually talked about in his 90-second statement about cycling, today. Um, we should grasp hold of that vision and opportunity. For the Avon Valley, it would include encouraging cyclists to travel further down the valley, down to the fabulous beach, three mile long beach we've got, the Markham Park, and if they're really adventurous, just go cycle along the Swansea Bay area, all the way to Mumbles. But it provides an opportunity we need to seriously take hold of. The opportunities are endless. The possibilities are bountiful. And this project can breathe new life into a valley whose people often feel cut off and forgotten about. I and many others envision the tunnel being the focal point of cycle events and running events. And there have been examples of these happening. Bath tunnels have been one of the cases where we have seen being used as a focal point for 5K, 10K, half marathons, full marathons. It's not just simply an opportunity to walk through them or cycle through them. They could be used for other events which bring more into the community. The Richard Burton 10K, and I'll promote that on November the 3rd, by the way, if you want to try, try it. We get over 1,000 runners into, the, into my village on that day, and they stay. And this is an opportunity, again, to look at what it can bring into the Ronda and the Avon Valleys, and people stay for those visits. So it's not simply about restoring a tunnel. It's about offering a new vision, a new experience for local people and visitors. And I've seen the figures from Bath, and they are phenomenal. But to the wider community, the benefits of people taking part in these events could invigorate local economy activity, which was severely impacted upon following the closure of the mines, which at that point provided so much employment to those living in those communities. Now, there are always challenges to building a vision around our industrial heritage, but in this case, one of the biggest challenges is as a result of the ownership of the other, this and other tunnels. This has currently halted any further development around the tunnel. I have written to the Minister, as well as raising the matter of ownership here in the Chamber, on numerous occasions, and we are no closer to resolving the matter today than we were three years ago. Now, I am grateful to the funding from the Welsh Government, and it has already made an important aspect on that project. However, without ownership of the tunnel being transferred from the Department of Transport to Wales, this might have all been in vain. 
further funding from other sources, and I'm not asking the Welsh Government funding, further funding from other sources to complete the work cannot be sought until the ownership has been addressed. I understand the Welsh Government is concerned for liabilities for place at their door. However, you've got to remember, at the moment, this tunnel is closed off. No liabilities hardly, unless a mountain falls in on it, with nobody inside it. So there's not much, really, to worry about at this point in time. Now, in a letter to myself and my colleague, Stephen Gunnock, MP, Baroness Vera Norburn, who's a Transport Minister in London for Roads and Security, states that the Under Secretary of State for Transport in 2017 wrote to the Welsh Government stating that the Secretary of State would be willing to transfer the tunnel to Welsh Government ownership and pay the sum of £60,000 to reflect savings uh, for future survey costs. And an offer which I'm told is still open to the Welsh Government. So the options to explore funding to reopen the tunnel may be explored. And we need to very seriously look at this. Let us have the longest cycle tunnel in Europe, the second longest in the world, open to cyclists and pedestrians, not only for active travel, not only for tourism, but to revitalise our valleys and make Cardiff easily accessible for people in the Avon Valley, because at the moment they have to go over the Maesteg, catch a Maesteg train. Wouldn't it be nice to like, cycle through the uh, tunnel and catch the trains into Herbert? Let's be forward-thinking and share the vision that I and the Tunnel and Society have, and many others. Let us have ambition. Deputy Minister, today's debate is an opportunity for you to share a vision with us, a vision to revitalise the communities across Wales, to share in a desire for, of my community, the Am Valley, to see the tunnel open for tourism, economic development and employment. But let us be forward-thinking. Let us take a little risk. Let us be ambitious. Let's open up a gem in the Avon Valley for future generations to enjoy and appreciate the history of our industrial past. Yeah.